Thank you. Put, for that purpose, is there any objection? There appears to be none. Could you restate the question, please, Mr Chairman? I need to no. restate the question. The question is that parts one to three, schedules one and two, and clauses one and two stand part. Adrian Rudapi. Tēnā koe te heamana o te komiti o te whare nei. Um, sir, I too want to um, uh, talk about the pre uh, preliminary provisions, in particular uh, a suge suggestion from one of the uh, submitters, uh, Venture Southland, who uh, recommended including a reference to peaceful purposes. And I just want to um, add to what my colleague Ian Lees Galloway um, has contributed uh, so far. And that is the, um, um, the, the whole notion around exactly what uh, the opposite of peaceful um, purposes are. For example, um, if the company, uh, company wanted to send out uh, into space a uh, particular product uh, which is from, for totally civilian uses right now, um, but could be in the future used for military purposes. Um, uh, I, I, th I think the issues that were, have been raised by in the departmental uh, report, and it goes to quite some length um, to discuss uh, about what exactly peaceful purposes might mean. Um, and it makes uh, statements like, um, in the context of space activities is ambiguous and open to differing interpretation. Um, I, th I think um, m the point that I want to make is that if, uh, in fact, um, a reference to peaceful purposes were made, then surely that could be um, uh, specified uh, um, uh, in the interpretation uh, around exactly what that meant. So it could actually say that it, um, <coughs> it excludes um, products that uh, have the intent of um, um, a civil uh, everyday purpose that might in some future time be used for military purposes, uh, but for that um, launch of that aircraft was for uh, peaceful purposes. And, uh, and I think that... Um, um, I, do, I really want to acknowledge Venture Southland for, for making the suggestion in the first place because I, I do think that it's, a, 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 um, uh, it's relevant and it, it is relevant to, to this. But I also want to acknowledge the uh, select committee. I wasn't on that select committee, but um, they have come up with a very specific new clause um, <coughs> uh, ensuring that... Uh, that the um, purpose of uh, um, uh, putting these um, uh, aircraft in, into um, outer space, uh, uh, not for the purpose of um, carrying nuclear weapons and weapons of mass, de mass destruction. Uh, and so I congratulate the um, uh, committee on that, but that does not um, in itself um, uh, totally mean, and certainly from my view of the world, that uh, um, peaceful purposes could not actually be part of uh, the interpretation and the purpose of this bill. Uh, and so that's, uh, um, that's the, um, uh, my first um, uh, part of, of what I wanted uh, to speak about. Um, the, the other um, issue that I wanted to talk about was uh, about the um, debris, orbital debris, and um, uh, and also um, uh, the, the, the uh, when something goes wrong in outer space. Uh, so um, the ensuring that there are um, uh, good um, uh, processes in place to deal deal with um, uh, severe and um, unexpected but possible accidents at, in, in space, um, whereby uh, debris is 
now orbiting around uh, the Earth. And uh, during the second reading, we did hear a number of um, contributions around um, the impact of um, uh, orbital debris. Uh, and I want to um, also highlight that uh, the contributions from the New Zealand Law Society um, that they, the concerns that they raised uh, on, on these matters. And um, I think it's on clause 76, I believe. Um, Chairman. Mr. Peter. Thank you. William Seal. Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you for. <laughs>